Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the course on symmetry, stereochemistry and applications. In the previous two lectures, we have tried to understand the various symmetry elements that a molecule can have and we have tried to show you how you can deter find out different symmetry elements present in a given molecule. So, that is not the end where we stop our understanding on the symmetry. So, when we try to find out the symmetries present in a molecule, what we try to do is we try to identify those symmetries using some name to the given symmetry and that name is called the molecular point group. So, the point group of a molecule represents all the symmetry elements that are present in a given molecule. So, the point group of a molecule describes the symmetry elements present in the molecule in a systematic manner. We should identify the symmetry elements present and based on the hierarchy of those symmetry elements, we then identify the molecules and classify them in different point groups. So, in this lecture, we will try to understand how those point groups are assigned using a given procedure. The symmetry elements of a molecule is first identified in this process in a systematic method and then the point group is assigned. So, how we do that we can understand this using a very elaborated flow chart which is shown here. So, what you can see here is flow chart where all possible symmetry elements and the classes of point groups are identified. So, when we get an object, we should start asking questions about the symmetries present in the object. So, when you look at one object, the first point that one asks whether the molecule is a linear molecule or a nonlinear molecule. If the molecule is linear, we move towards the left. If the molecule is nonlinear, we move them move it along the right. So, this is similar to a family tree. If the molecule is linear, we then ask another question, the next question whether the molecule has inversion center or not. If the molecule has inversion center, we move along this line and identify the point group as D infinity H. If the molecule does not have inversion center, we then write it as C infinity V. We will see these with appropriate examples. Suppose most of the molecules what we see are nonlinear, and in case of nonlinear molecules, we then look for different symmetry elements. For example, first thing that one should look for whether we have two or more. C n axis where n is greater than 2, which means we should look for whether the molecule has a C 3, C 4, C 5 or any other higher axis. And if we if, if the molecule has 2 or more such axis like more than 2 C 3's or more than 2 C 4's and so on. If the answer is yes, you move down along the left hand side. If the answer is no, you go towards right and then we slowly go and find out the point group as you can see in this slide. I am not going to elaborate so much here because I am going to take some examples. Then when you do not have uh, 2 or more C n axis with n greater than 2, we come to the next question is there a major order axis C n. So, does the molecule contain a C n? Does it have a C 2, C 3 or C 4? Only one of them should be present. If the answer is yes, we come down. 
If the answer is no, we go towards the right. When the answer is yes, suppose there is a C3, we ask whether there are three C2s which are perpendicular to that C3. So, if you have a C3 present in a molecule, do you have three perpendicular C2s in that molecule? So, if the answer is yes, you move along the left. If the answer is no, you go down and ask the questions one after another that are written in these boxes. And then we end up in various groups of sets of point groups. On the other hand, when you say that there is no CN, that means there is no C2, C4, or C3, C4 and so on, then we ask does it have a mirror plane? If the compound has a mirror plane or the molecule has a mirror plane, the, the answer is yes, you go down this way. If the answer is no, you go down that way and you end up getting these three point groups. So, we need to keep this flow chart in mind for your or and our easy reference in the following slides. I have kept this chart in a smaller version and then I have taken those molecules for which we have already determined the symmetry elements in the previous two classes. So, from our previous knowledge, if we take the molecule water, the first question that is asked is does it, is it a linear molecule? The answer is no, water is not a linear molecule, water is a bent molecule. Next question, does it have two or more C n where n is greater than 3? Clearly, water does not have C3, C4 and so on, it only has a C2. So, the answer is no. Then we ask the next question, is there a major axis C n? Yes, the molecule has a C2, which is drawn like that. This is my C2. The next question asked is, does it have so, when it has C2, we come down this way and ask does it have two perpendicular C2s? The answer is no. So, we come down this way. So, when we say that the next question asked is sigma h, which means if you have a twofold and a perpendicular mirror, that perpendicular mirror is your C sigma h, and in this particular case, there is no sigma h. So, when there is no sigma h, we further go down and ask whether there are n number of sigma v's. Of course, water molecule has two sigma v as we have learnt in the previous lecture. So, this is one sigma v and the other sigma v is the perpendicular mirror plane which is containing the C2 axis. So, water molecule has two numbers of sigma v. So, this molecule has C2 and two sigma v's, the answer is yes. So, we move towards the right and write the point group as C 2 v. You see the way I am writing is capital C small 2 as a subscript and v also as a subscript. So, C 2 v is the point group of water. So, now if I try to find out the point group of ammonia, for you it should be very very simple. What ammonia is? A pyramidal shaped molecule with the lone pair here and in the previous class we have understood that it has a C 3 and it has 3 sigma v's. So, it is very similar to water only thing is that it has a C 3 axis. So, the point group of this molecule should be C 3 v. Now, let us try to see what happens when it is the case of B f 3. 
the way I am drawing BF3 is one boron and fluorine are on the plane of the projection. This fluorine is above the plane and the other fluorine here is below the plane of the projection. So, this axis is C3. So, I have C3. Next question is asked does it have three perpendicular C2s? The answer is yes, because this axis is a C2, this axis is a C2, and that axis is a C2, and all these three C2s are perpendicular to the C3. So, the answer is yes. So, the next question is does it have sigma h that means, is there a mirror plane perpendicular to the C 3 axis. So, in this case yes the molecule has a sigma h that we have already seen in the previous class the, the molecular plane is the sigma h. Therefore, the point group of this molecule should be from there we come down this way and then we come down this way. So, in this case we have got n number of C 2s perpendicular to C 3. So, 3 C 2s perpendicular to C 3 we come to the left we have asked a question this is sigma h and that sigma h makes it d n h that is d 3 h. I leave this molecule for you to understand and find out the point group, because this will be very similar to BF 3. Let us try to draw the next molecule which is benzene. What is benzene? How many symmetry elements are present here? What you can see is that the molecule has a C 6 passing through the center of the ring. So, it has a C 6. Now, the question is does it have 6 perpendicular C 2s? So, the answer is yes, because it has 1 C 2, 2 C 2s, third C 2, fourth C 2, fifth C 2 and sixth C 2. So, it has 6 perpendicular C 2s. What else? So, the question is does it have sigma h? The answer is yes, it has sigma h. So, the point group turns out to be D 6 h. Similar to B F 3, I just took this example, because here I could show that there can be 6 perpendicular C 2s in a molecule. Remember this 6 perpendicular C 2s are perpendicular to the principal axis C 6. Let us go to the next set of molecules. Cis 1 2 dichloroethane. Very quickly I would like you to remember from the previous class we, when we discussed this uh, molecule we discussed that there is a C 2 this molecular plane is a sigma v and the perpendicular plane containing the C 2 is other sigma v. So, it is like water molecule. So, by symmetry it, ha it has the same symmetry like water molecule. So, therefore, the point group is again like water C 2 V.
Now, what about the trans compound? The trans molecule is different. So, if we write the trans molecule like this, you can find out what symmetry elements that are present. So, in case of trans molecule, there is a C 2 which is passing through the center of the bond, but perpendicular to the plane of the projection. So, that makes the rotation this way and chlorine goes and falls on the other chlorine hydrogen goes and falls on the other hydrogen. What else does this have? This has a plane which is the plane of the projection that is a mirror plane and that mirror plane is perpendicular to C 2. So, it is sigma h. So, directly we see that between these two molecules the, there is a significant difference in symmetry and the point group for this trans 1 2 dichlorocycloethene would be C 2 H. C 2 B for cis and C 2 H for the trans molecule. So, cis trans isomers would have different spectroscopic properties because of difference in their symmetry. What about 1 2 dichlorobenzene? Once again we should try to draw the molecule and try to find out the symmetry elements that are present. By adding two chlorines on benzene, what we have done is we have destroyed the C 6 symmetry. So, it does not have C 6 symmetry anymore. So, what symmetry does it have? It is clearly visible that this is a C 2 bisecting the molecule. The plane of the molecule is a sigma plane and that plane contains the C 2 axis. So, it is sigma v. Then a plane that I am drawing using a different color is the plane which is above and below the plane of the projection like that. So, if you have the benzene molecule like this one mirror plane is like that and the other mirror plane is like this both containing the two fold axis in the middle. So, this one is also a sigma v. So, once again this dichlorobenzene is belonging to C 2 v point group. What about 1 4 dichlorobenzene? I leave that to you by uh, for your understanding, I am just going to draw the molecule for yourself. Try to find out the point group of this molecule. Now comes that famous molecule called aline. In the previous class what we have seen by drawing this aline inside a cube, this aline has 3 perpendicular C 2 axis. If you do not remember how it was drawn, maybe I should draw it once again here for your immediate understanding. Always we try to draw a cube and then we draw this aline molecule inside the cube. So, that one can easily understand the presence of three perpendicular C 2s in this molecule. So, I have drawn the cube in yellow and I will draw the hydrogens and the molecule in green. C 
see what I am doing is I am drawing the hydrogens at the alternate corners of the cube and I have three carbon atoms forming a chain like that. The bottom carbon atom is connected to these two hydrogens. The up carbon atom is connected to those two hydrogens. So, this is the molecule aline drawn inside a cube. Now, if I try to draw the symmetry elements, there is a C2 which is passing through the center of this cube and passing through the CC bond is 1 C2. Then there is 1 C2 which is passing from this center through that carbon and going to the other side as another C2 and the third C2 is passing from the front center to the back center is my third C2. So, now this falls in a category where we have a C2 like this. We have two perpendicular C2s. So, we come here. Now, the question is does it have sigma h? The answer is no. None of the C2s have a perpendicular mirror plane. If you have a perpendicular mirror plane, then that hydrogen should come here and this hydrogen should go there and the molecule would change its direction. So, when we see that there is no sigma h, the question is do we have sigma d? Do we have at least two sigma d's? The answer is yes, we have sigma d's. Where are the sigma d's? The sigma d's that we have are shown here using this blue color. This is a sigma d which bisects these two C2s. There is a sigma d here which bisects the other two C, uh, the same set of C2s. So, we have two C2, the uh, two sigma d is bisecting C2, C, C2s. Therefore, the point group turns out to be d 2 d. Remember, when we have n number of perpendicular C 2s, it becomes d and depending on whether we have sigma h or not, whether we have sigma d or not, it can be d n h, d n d or simply d n. This molecule is a complex cation and we have drawn this molecule in the previous class. So, I will quickly draw it in the way I had drawn it in the previous class. Taking the nickel at the center, drawing a triangle about it and drawing a, an inverted triangle about the same nickel, identifying that these two triangles are at two different levels and then we write the nitrogen atoms as we had written in the previous class and join those two nitrogens at a time making it ethylene diamine ligand. So, what are the symmetry elements that we found in the previous class in this molecule? The symmetry elements that we found are the following. We have C 3 which is obvious which is very easily seen passing through nickel and going through the center of these triangles. Then what we have? Do we have three perpendicular C 2s? Yes, the quest answer is yes. We have a C 2 here. We have a C 2 there and then there is a third C 2 passing through the center of the molecule. So, it has C 3 plus 
3 into perpendicular C 2's. So, we have already come here and the answer is yes up to that. Now, the next question is does it have sigma h? The answer is no. Next question is does it have sigma d? The answer is no because sigma d means the mirror plane should be between two C 2's. So, suppose this C 2 and that C 2 there should be a mirror here which does not exist. So, there is no sigma d that means, when there is no sigma d we come here and write this space group, uh, point group as d 3. It is a d n point group. Now, I have drawn written two molecules for which I would like you to find out the point groups yourself. We can again draw these molecules for your understanding. Platinum, it is trans. So, we have two chlorines at trans position, two ammonia at trans position like that. And when it is cis, we have platinum with two chlorine atoms on one side and the ammonia molecules on the other side. So, what are the symmetry elements present in these two molecules? We have already discussed in the previous class. So, you try to find out the point groups of these two molecules. We will start the next lecture from here. Thank you.